Hi guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from mytestedesp.net. In my previous two videos I explained two of the common pitfalls when uh, developers are using Entity Framework or Entity Framework Core. In this video I'm going to continue the series and I'm going to talk about Entity Framework performance tips and how not to suck when using the cool Microsoft ORM framework. In this video we're going to talk about selecting too many columns and not needing all of them. If you're not familiar with this sample, I suggest you watch my previous two videos because I showed what kind of database we're using and two other mistakes people often make with Entity Framework. So what's the, what's the deal with select? The deal with select is that uh, we need to use select every single time. Why, you may ask? Because we may uh, not need all the columns in the table and even if, in, if we need it now, we may not need it in the future. So when we are using select, we are improving our maintainability and we are improving our code base that it won't hit a performance issue in the future. And now I'm going to show a small example. For example, if I decide to get all the cats from the database which name star contains the uh, digit one and I project that uh, these rows to a dictionary and the dictionary only contains the name and the age. So essentially the type of the dictionary is dictionary of, of string and int. If I write the query this way, I would expect that Entity Framework will fetch only the name and only the age. I'm not using a select, so at first I'm not seeing anything unrelated uh, to the cat's name and to the cat's age. But unfortunately, if I execute that query, First, I'm going to see that all cats, cat names and cat ages are fetched, so it looks fine. But unfortunately, the SQL query generated by Entity Framework includes all the columns. Birth date, color, owner ID, ID and essentially a lot of columns I'm not using and I'm not needing in my code. So the problem here is that I'm uh, retrieving more data that it's needed and my memory gets uh, a lot more full than if I'm explicitly saying what kind of columns I need. So essentially these cats will have a lot more uh, memory consumption. The other problem is if this is not an issue currently and I don't care about the memory consumption of two, three columns uh, in general, so, uh, what will happen here is that if I come, for example, three months from writing this query, I, I write this query, three months passes by, and then I come here and I add an image for my cat. And I'm starting saving images in the database, which for example are one to two megabytes or more, not sure, but I'm saving something larger than my typical primitive type, like string or int. And having this byte array added here, most of the time I won't be able to find all queries which don't use select and get their data uh, fixed. Because currently when I fetch the name and the age of the query, I'm fetching only 
uh, I'm not fetching only the name and the age, I'm fetching the images too. So essentially I'm getting all the other columns which some of them may be huge, for example, this byte array. So the problem is that I'm not going to have an issue right now when I write this query because it will work. But in the future when my app grows and I add additional columns to my entity types, I may not see that I'm introducing performance issues on various uh, components in my web application or in my application in general. So it is advised here to use select and select explicitly only the columns you need. So that's essentially a problem. I'm going to remove the byte array because I don't need it, but you got the idea. If in the future someone adds a new column, this query will continue to get it, even if it does not need it. You, you won't need the column in your code. And this code works fine. So what to do is to always include a select statement providing exactly what information you're needing. That will solve all your future problems with fetching too many columns from the database. So the solution is quite easy. Add a select statement. The select statement is, uh, for example, an anonymous object. And I'm explicitly saying I want only the name and the age of my table. Running this, I will see that with the second query, I'm getting only the name and the age. And with the first query, I'm getting the whole table, which in some cases may be too much. Now we may see that uh, the first query executes quite longer than the second one, but usually the performance is not that bad uh, the first time a query is executed it's a cold query so entity framework has to parse it and cache it so uh, i'm going to talk about the cold and warm queries in a, another video but if we copy If we copy the same query and run it, we will see that it will perform much faster. It's still slower than the select version because Entity Framework has to deal with more objects. We have more, more columns which we are retrieving, so Entity Framework has to deal with them and has to provide them even if we are not using them directly and the framework has to process them. So using a select is always a better idea. Yeah, the performance is not that better, but still it's quite an improvement. It's still fast enough even if you don't use select, but if you select, it will be even better. And what's even more important, if the database is not on your local server it's for example in the cloud or it's on the separate server and so on on the network you're going to set send a lot more data if you're executing the full query and getting all the columns so if you use a select you will save uh, you will save a lot of network traffic too besides performance and memory improvement. So it's a good idea to use select every single time. Just select whatever you need. If, for example, the database uh, table changes, this select will not include anything more than the name and the age. I'm going to show some more stuff about the select. 
and before that i want to thank my sponsors maybe you know but i have uh, open source projects which are developed in my free time most of them for the asp.net framework they are provide easy and fast testing solutions to uh, assert various components of asp.net applications it works for both mvc and api scenarios and you can assert very easy without lots of mocking various components like controllers services models it has built-in database built-in cache providers and so on you may find these projects useful and uh, since these projects are developed in my free time i have to, i have to support them i would like to thank all my volunteers who are currently contributing to the projects and i would like to thank my sponsors softuni smart it and noble hire for their contributions to the project thank you guys you guys truly rock if some of you watching this video want to support me you you will find all the available options on my github profile okay let's continue uh, you are not always you should not always use the select here you may use the original object because sometimes sometimes you need to return the data and if the data for example like this you need to return the data from a method and if you need to return the data you cannot return a list of a because a is an anonymous object here what you need to do is you need to create a new class specific for this query in a typical web application that may that may be a service model or view model or response model or anything like that but you should create a new a new class which represents the new type we're using in the query and since I'm not projecting cats into cars I'm going to and then I can use cat result saying name equals c name and h equal ch that's the correct way of using uh, select statements of creating a new class every time you make a projection of course anonymous anonymous types are great but depending on your architecture it may not be uh, you may not be able to use them if you don't want to if you don't want to map property by property like this you may use auto mapper i have a video about it so make sure you check it out auto mapper helps with mapping objects if, and it has a query provider for entity framework so it allows you to uh, say something like project to get a result and it will do the heavy lifting for you or maybe should be called lazy lifting because we are lazy to write these properties okay guys that was for this video remember to always include a select statement in your queries you will improve your memory uh, consumption and you you will improve your applications performance and you will not uh, leave the possibility to include a bug or uh, bad performance in a query in the future without even reali realizing it thank you for being with me if you like my projects or my videos con consider supporting me on patreon or on open collective even a single star is also enough so go to my projects and give them a star I will be very happy 
and if you learned something new today hit the thumbs up button or leave a comment below bye